Hi there, Frank here from Remick, and welcome to part two of our mini series on backtesting. And let's see where we left off last time. So, what we did last time in part one was basically just ran our strategy BT with certain settings, one contract. And the idea was just to recap to put our stop and target the same distance from our entry, thereby eliminating the potential variance inherent in the win-loss ratio. So we just set the win-loss ratio to one, which means our stop and the target is the same. And what we want to find out is how many percent of our trades will be winners and how many percent will be losers and start to have a better idea whether we have an edge or what we want to do has an edge on the market. Notice that we had no second contract. So whatever is here, just know that since we entered zero here, this is irrelevant. And we also, one more thing we can do, we can save these settings. So just to make sure that every time we, as we proceed in our backtesting routine, we have to make sure that we use the same settings each time so we can easily save these settings as the template, as a default template. And therefore, every time I load the strategy analyzer and BT, I'm going to have the same, I'm gonna start with the same values. Okay, so let's see what's the next step here. Well, before we proceed, we can look at some of the results here. And last time we looked at some gross profits and net profits. This time, let's focus on the actual accuracy of our strategy, which means how many percent of our trades over a 12 year period were winners on this time frame and on these 12 or 13 futures contracts? How many percent of our trades were winners and losers? So this is the top contenders. Let's say we notice that these are indexes. And then everything else, as we go down the list, are either treasuries or commodities or currencies. So it's interesting to notice that while none of these were really bad, as we go down to list, the best or contenders are among the indexes. The other thing you can notice is that we're never going to find 70, 80, 90 percent accuracy. So this is just further proof that those folks talking about high probability trades and stuff like that out on the internet, just imagine all, all our opponents on the markets are pretty smart, pretty well capitalized people, and they're not going to do us a favor. So this is never going to be easy. In other words, any edge that we find will be slight. They will exist because edges are a result of human behavior, crowd behavior, and that changes very, very slowly, hasn't really changed in probably tens of thousands of years. So we do have a chance to capitalize on that, but these edges will never be too big. Okay, so, so much about that. So as we can see, we have some pretty good opportunities here on the indexes, and let's see if we can take it further. So in this video, in part two, what we're gonna do is realize the fact that by just putting on one contract with the same target and stop values, I actually, I might be limiting the results of my strategy because if there's any extended runs, then I will not be participating. So if I just want to imagine that there's a trend and I always get out at 150, it was 150 target. Then, if it goes like five ATRs, I will not be participating in that move. So, one way to try to get more of the action of a good move is to introduce a second contract. So, let's try to do that in this video. Let me just scroll down here. So it's important to realize that we're going to 
keep everything else, every other variable the same. We're not gonna change anything. The only thing we're going to change is enter one here because this will be our second contract our second order set to be exact, but there will only be one contract in this order set. And notice that we're using the same distance. So let's review what we're doing here. What we're doing here is we're going to put two contracts on the market. The target for both, let's start with the target. Here we go. The target for both will be 1.5 ATRs. The stop loss for both will be 1.5 ATRs. Please notice that this will not move, but this will potentially become a trailing stop. So this can move and this is fixed. Okay, and then what we want to do is trailing stop. We want to decide when we want the trailing stop to be activated. And what we are saying here is that we are activating the trailing stop when the first target is hit. Also notice that for the second contract, we do not have a target. The target we only have for the first contract. The second target is open target because what we want is we're going to trail it from behind and actually we're going to zoom in with the contract because we're going to switch on the parabolic trailing stop with just the default values. But on second thought, you know what? Let's just have this switched on for now. This is another variable which we do not necessarily need. We can play around with it later. But right now, let's just proceed one step at a time. So I'm gonna have this switched off for now. And now we have the two contracts ready to go. And I'm gonna hit run. So we're testing for 12 years with these settings. And let's see if and remember, we can even save a JPEG of these or export these into Excel, just so that we know what we're looking for. So what we're looking for is something similar to this result. So ideally, we would like to see the same instruments by and large as the best performers. If the performers, the best performers are completely different, then, well, we need to dig in a little deeper, but hopefully let's see if these indexes continue to perform well with these settings now that we have two contracts and hopefully we're going to take advantage of some of the bigger moves by trailing and by having a runner on the market. Okay, so let's see what happens. I'm gonna hit run and we'll be back in a second. All right, here we go. The whole thing took about two minutes on a pretty fast machine. So here we are, let's have a look. So this is our, these are our indexes at the top and I'm happy to see that not much has changed. If I sort it by results best on top, then I have the four indexes on top just like before. So that's, that's pretty good. That means that adding a runner will not really make the strategy worse, which means it makes it probable, likely, that we are in the process of proving that we do have an edge. Now, of course, you can take a screenshot or export this into Excel for further analysis because this Ninja Trader, of course, Excel note can do a lot more with data than this chart or table here. So feel free to dig deeper in the, in the data if you want. And uh, there's a lot of things we can do here. So let me just mention one. The question might become, okay, so how much money do I need to trade this strategy with these settings at this point? We're not done yet. We're still going to evolve and change things and uh, add stuff, variables, to the picture, but the guiding principle for us should be something like this. You look at the max drawdown, that means that the maximum pain we had to endure while the strategy ran. And as you can see, there are various numbers here. This also depends on volatility and the tick size of the instrument, of course. I think as a, 
a rule of thumb, probably you could multiply this by three. It's just like when you're walking on the ice, you know, you want to make sure that the ice will hold. So multiply this by three, and then probably you have a good chance that in, as a worst case scenario, your account will not be blown. You will always have enough money to finish the trade or continue trading. So multiply it by three, and we also have to add to it the probably the margin required by the by the broker. So if the broker requires you to have five thousand dollars on the account at any one time, then you have to add that to this result. So maybe maybe twenty thousand plus five. So the RTY with a twenty five thousand dollar account seems to be pretty safe as a rough estimate to trade this strategy on the RTY. But as you can see, for example, on the DAX, you need a lot more money and also on the ES. What are we going to do next? Well, this is pretty good. I'm happy to see that the indexes continue to be the best performers. And now we're still, we can still do things actually to improve the results because as you remember, we didn't use the trailing stop the parabolic squeezing or tightening of the trailing stop. And we have a pretty good intelligent algorithm built into this part of the strategy. This it itself is, I think, is worth the price of the admission. This is very smart. It will tighten the stop based on market action. So it's not hard coded, it's not pre decided, it will follow market action and act accordingly. There is a detailed description of all this in the documentation. So I'm not going to go into this uh, at, in this video. You can read all about it on our website. And uh, I'm just going to say now that I'm using the default value. So the bottom line is that this trailing stop will, as price hopefully proceeds or progresses, it will slowly but surely tighten the stop behind price and at one point we're going to be gracefully stopped out and this will be the result of our second contract if everything goes well. So I'm going to switch that off now and run the strategy again and let's see if the results are any different and again I'm mostly interested if the indexes can stay on top and we're still working with a basically a one to one on the first contract. So this is still an important column for me. All right, let's run the strategy and we'll be back. Okay, here we go. So we have now used the accelerated parabolic trailing stop. And let's see if the results are any better if there's any changes in the top four, let's say. So these still continue to be pretty good. I'm just going to sort them again. Here we go. And same instruments are on top. And no real changes. The NQ probably is the only index which, but still 52%, there's a slight edge. So it's still okay. And the profit factor for most of these, the indexes anyway, is firmly above one, even for the NQ. What does this prove? Well, proof is a tough word. Proof is 100%. Proof, we're never going to have proof in trading because we're dealing with the future. And this is the past. The future will, well, the best it can do is with rhyme with the past, but it's never going to be the same as the past, of course. But this provides some evidence. And as you continue to work with the data and devising your own backtesting procedure, because this is just uh, designed to inspire you and get you started. And there's a lot of other possibilities and techniques you can use. So feel free to devise your own method, and, uh, but just make sure that you have a procedure to establish whether you have an edge. Again, this is a the BT itself, our software program, the strategy, the settings of which you see is superbly sophisticated and is based on something real that is observable in crowd behavior. 
but that is just an opportunity for you to build your own edge because there's a lot of other variables as we reviewed some of them just to state the most obvious account size will be one so you can buy the best software product on the planet but if the ice is too thin below your feet then you're going to get blown out so there's a lot of other variables that you have to consider but this as far as we are concerned is the best place to start okay so happy discovering happy research don't get discouraged if the first results are not good and i hope this little exercise points out the fact that there is strong evidence that our strategy and our methodology has a basis in reality and you can structure a real edge around it by defining your own little details and your own settings your own time frames whichever instrument you want to run the strategy on so thank you very much that's it for now and let's see what we can do in part three until then mindful trading